I V M. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Fight Mania. By your host and those Somesh, the superhuman camera, and Dubai return. Arjun, aka Mystic Chips Chipalkati, is here with us. Arjun <laughs> has a side job of finding extremely high-end properties for our producer Suroni Jain. He's back from Burj, Burj Al Arab. Burj Al Arab. You have to say it right. Burj Al Arab. Burj Al Arab. Cutting yet another deal. <laughs> we'll do it later. We'll do that later. <laughs> extremely wealthy producer. Welcome back to India, Arjun, aka Mystic Chips. How are you? All well, brother. All well, but I think we have a lot more to talk about. So let's quickly go into a commercial break and then come back and discuss what all happened in this mad, mad, crazy, crazy world that we call mixed martial arts and boxing and fighting and everything. See, I'm doing Sydney work. It's very hot and hot. So we'll be back after a quick commercial break. Ah, Sydney, 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 Eklavia has got a great episode. He talks to Jose, the erstwhile MTV VJ and comedian. They discuss the creator economy and Web 3.0. On Cider says his cock and bull. Cider Skajo, Sri Ram, and Antrik talk about Internet Explorer shutting down after 27 years. On Shunya One, Shila Dite talks to Sunit Gajbiye, co-founder and chief business officer of Finance Peer. They discuss the journey so far. On Press Decode, Sarah Bagda and Prafula discuss the Indian Army's employment and retirement policies. And on postcards from nowhere, Utsav talks to us about Soma, the world's greatest unsolved culinary mystery. We got some exciting news for you. IBM Podcast has just launched its merch line, and you should check it out now. Head over to the IBM Podcast website, that's ibmpodcast dot com, and click on the shop tab to check out our first collection of T shirts. Also, do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows, for that matter, please do tell a friend. That really does help. Don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. And also, do remember you can check out a number of our shows on YouTube. You can go to ibmpodcast.com/slash/youtube to get a list of the channels that we are keeping active. We also are doing a small listener survey. If you could go to ibmpodcast.com/slash/survey to fill this out, it'll just take a few minutes, and it really helps us out. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week: SBI Life Insurance, Apne Liye, Apno Ke Liye, Jupiter, a digital banking app, Cap Gemini, get the future you want, Intel V Pro, built for business, and Intel Future Banana, wonderful with Intel powered laptops. इतने सारे sponsors, Arjun, A K Mystic Chips, ये क्या हो रहा है? We can, we can add, we can add uh, Dubai tourism and uh, and Burj Al Arab to the entire package now. <laughs> and Fight Island. <laughs> <laughs> and Fight Island, but guys, welcome back uh, to uh, episode four of Fight Mania. Sorry, last week, guys, we really couldn't do it. It was because that I had gone, had left for um, incredible fight card, boxing fight card that took place uh, in uh, in the World Trade Center in Dubai. It was under DGMC Promotions, who were doing right. uh, a lot of good work, Somesh, for Indian boxers. And I remember after the show ended, the gentleman who runs the show, the promoter. Who does DJMC box? His name is Dunstan Rosario. He's a nice man. Multiple businesses, as a lot of people in Dubai do have. Right. And um, this guy comes and says, he's like, I don't care who's fighting, but my my primary focus is to promote Indian talent. Listen, that's awesome. And, you know, why don't you tell all the listeners what DJMC boxing is about? Because you go there almost every alternate month to cover their boxing events as a commentator, and we've seen some fabulous yeah. fights that don't get broadcasted on Indian television. However. There's that's some sad. excellent talent that's coming out of there. In fact, the last event itself had some crazy finishes. Why don't you run us through? So they had five. So they've started now. I've realized that every promotion in the world, every kind of fighting, every sport now has a, a element that includes a social media element to it. Yes. You watch the IPL. IPL also has that. You know that IPL box, which is has like the maximum number of influencer or something that's attached. To social media, yes. So yes. it's the boxing ring has become a ultimate battleground to settle your disputes. Yes. So even influencers are starting putting on the gloves. It started. It all began with Jake Paul, and now it's trickled down to everybody else. Yes. So, uh, so these they were. Can you imagine? They have set a record statistic 
six KOs out of which there were two body shot KOs in a nine fight card. What? You mean there were what? There were six, seven finishes on a nine fight card? Six finishes out of which two were body shots. Oh my God, that is beautiful. You know, I wish, I wish we could see this. Like, can we see the fights in India? We can. I think they're going to be coming up. They're still dealing with some, you know, it's a new company. They're dealing with uh, a lot of uh, broadcast issues. They've right. tied up with partners locally and they're available on Fight TV. So you can watch the replay on Fight TV. Oh, that's awesome. That's All the stuff is up there. You know, that is so cool. In fact, we are back after two weeks. So we have so much lined up. Oh my of God. Course, I up with... <laughs> I of course, coming up. I know you missed me, bro. Of course we do. We miss you in the studio. I miss Pajpuki. <laughs> <laughs> see there, see there. This, this, this is the sign of coming back from Dubai. This, this exactly. Thank <laughs> God the listeners heard it. Now it's out there in the open. Now you can't even deny it. <laughs> you know, most people say bless you. अरे नहीं वहाँ की हवा थोड़ी सी you know garam I like hai, the reeti in the air. Garam hai, garam. It's hot na. अरे but अरे but this is the bullshit yeah. Because we came back and you know you know aircrafts where nobody listens no. Yeah. So I've got into trouble. <laughs> by saying things at airports that I should not be saying. So I'm not going to repeat myself live on the air. But uh, the thing is that it's it's nobody listens and people are coughing and this, that. and Right. Oh my God. It's just a, it's just a one closed box of, of diseases at this point. But what was a closed box for us was UFC 275. Where we had oh an God. incredible round of fights which we had. Do you remember we lost to. our voice in the studio? We lost our voice because we were screaming our guts out. Yuri Prohaska oh, versus Glover Teixeira. Yeah. We had Valentina Shevchenko versus Tyler Santos. We had Zhang Wai Li versus Joanna, which that were the three shot, big huh? fights out of five. And can you imagine? <laughs> there were three finishes out of five. One was a split decision. Sorry, there were four finishes. There were two KOs, That's... one TKO, one submission. And Valentina Shevchenko went split decision with Tyler Santos. But as you said, you know, uh, mm-hmm. of course, there was there was Joanna calling her retirement that day. With a vicious, vicious spinning back fist by Zhang Wiley. Zhang Wiley, yeah. I think that was an illegal move, firstly. <laughs> no, it was not. It was okay, not I know. Yeah, I'm kidding. Okay. Guys, don't <laughs> listen to me. We've been saying this as a joke for the longest time. I'm a huge Joanna Yochechek fan. Yeah. And it is, uh, you know, she took, a, she took, how long was her break, Somesh? Two years, two and a half yeah, years? Yeah, it was, it was about two and a half years. So, it's ironic. She put on the fight of the year, January 2020, yes. with Zhang Weili. It went five rounds to the distance for a decision. And then came back to face her same opponent, who had this time in the second round, knocked her out badly. In the second round, two minutes, 30 seconds almost. You know, I wish we could see a picture of uh, Joanna Yochechek. Uh, if our producer can put up that picture right now, it would yes. be great. She's had such a storied career, you know. Yes. You, we, we're taking a moment to talk about her because it's she's not only has she been an iconic champion. Yes. She has been. Um, how many times did she defend her belt, Somesh? Roughly. Um, I, I don't remember, times? but I think at least three, four times she has she has defended her belt. One of the top flyweight contenders in the UFC, but you know, sadly, what happens when she came back after two and a half years? Zhang Wiley was a differently motivated animal and Joanna unfortunately yeah. was making so much money outside of UFC that you know you think you love fighting but once you step in there with a monster that's motivated it's a yeah. whole new ball game out there you know it's a whole new ball I gotta game. give her I gotta give her props though I mean look at the kind yeah. of competition Rose Nama Junas yeah. Valentina Shevchenko she's faced the kind, the kind of fighters that people you know don't normally face in a row Right. You know, these are two two champions that have she's faced across two weight divisions. Right. She's been she has had such an incredible career. So we'd like to say, you know, thank you for all the amazing memories. Joanna Yochechek. She's 35 years old. She wants to focus on her the rest of her businesses and being a mother. Yes. So good luck to you with that. Thank you. You'll be, always be a legend. Absolutely. But what was really legendary is what Tyler Santos put on in front of Valentina Shevchenko. Split decision victory. Do you agree with that? A- that was close. You know, that I was re- close. I rewatched the fight again. Uh-huh. I agree. See, look, in the in the first, when you watch it, the way you're watching it. By the way, it's it was a statistic. This is the first time in the history of her career that Valentina Shevchenko has lost on all the three judges' scorecards. Uh, uh, sorry, on one judges. Has lost all rounds on one judges' scorecard. That's crazy. That's crazy. Just she lost just goes to the show, entire fight on one judges' scorecard. Just goes to show how close your prediction was when you said, what if... 
the upset that could happen that I'm night telling you, was dude, Tyler I'm Santos telling you. and you were so close on that one you were so close dude, you know it was I'm telling you she was a different animal yeah she was she, i mean she came she came in brilliantly motivated and what a strategy you know she came in i mean i know this 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 particular uh, fight card what we're talking ufc 275 was two weeks back but because we missed one show we have to cover it yeah you know no but sumesh the the deciding factor was you know valentina has a very well rounded game you know she yes. can take you down she can strike with you yes but i think this is the first time she got so badly muscled yes. in the grappling she got badly muscled and and but her strategy later worked in that fourth and fifth round she kept her distance and went pat 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 just hit her but you know these brazilians and, are made of a different i mean they're just different breeds of people mera you know, khun bhi half brazilian you, you know, know. <laughs> so <laughs> i didn't you know i don't know people from kurla are half brazilian yeah <laughs> <laughs> but with my current hairstyle so i'm either I, i either i need to i need to join the cast of junoon remake yeah. <laughs> or i i need to get go to brazil <laughs> Well, I think I think Tere Naam Part Two is coming in, yeah. <laughs> no, but Tere Naam Part Two has to be like this. Now this is full Tere Naam Part Two, no? But yeah, but what was Tere Naam Part Two was Yiri Prohaska's absolutely shocking submission of the champion Glover Teixeira. Oh my God! Before we even get to the submission, what was that fight? It was unreal. It went. It was fifth round, four minute thirty seconds. and clover was winning that fight i don't know what was hap- i just I, you know this is this is this is you remember the same fight okay not as uh, lopsided uh, when chael sonnen faced anderson silva till the in the fifth round till the fourth minute or the third minute yeah you know everybody thought chael was winning because chael versus anderson silva cards. yes yes versus anderson silva and anderson out of nowhere slaps on a triangle and catches him right right and so this is so similar. similar so similar but but this was such a brawl where glover was hurting yiri yiri was dropping glover it was i mean you know if people really need to rewatch the fight please log on to sony live get that membership you have to watch this fight it is oh, something so while you are there you please watch our uh, you have access to watching the ultimate guide to ufc and the post show absolutely so watch yes watch the analysis there as well you know it was it was so beautiful it was so close and you know there is one really nice aspect what the ufc have added is they are giving crypto bonuses to all the fighters and i have loved that because crypto.com is one of the sponsors and each event they get so there are three winners in each event the first one is going to get $30000 of bitcoin the second one 20000 and the third place is going to get 10000 so it was valentina shivchenko who won it then came jiri prohaska and wiley zhang so apart from Man, the bonuses crazy. they are getting crypto worth 30000 20000 and 10000 and i don't know somehow in ufc 275 and the next event which is ufc fight night which was in austin there were so many bonuses so many bonuses performance of the night bonus goes to i mean Shab- come on the amount you know? of knockouts that we saw were insane that, insane the, you know i mean the there bonuses. is something which is going on in the ufc they just giving bonuses to like four five fighters after that there's going to be fight of the night and performance of the night so there was wiley zhang there was jake matthews uh, there was uh, jack della maheshet and silva gomez who won the performance of the night and of course yiri prohaska glover tashera won the fight of the night bonus man that's see that's the thing man that when you have that kind of you know the sponsors and the money then yeah. it becomes it's it's not comparable because now it's a machine it's yes. like it's like talking about jio you know it's like comparing it to reliance is what jio did when they entered the telecom market they slashed their reach to a point of stupidity Well, well, it's, it's like also it's also what happened incredible. when uh, when the IPL bids were on and Geo kind of outlast everyone. Actually, ironically, Star Sports has won it. Uh, Star Sports has won the broadcast bid. Yeah, uh, that did, was the initial that was the initial leak, which is not true. Uh, Star Sports has got the bid. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we can discuss this. Uh, we can discuss this on another time because the, the we are not on the, uh, this thing. Show, show. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I have I have received some information on the side which uh, which leads me to believe that it is not the former; it's the latter. But uh, coming back to uh, speaking of uh, controversial bids, as always, we see our lovely one and only Nate Diaz. Who, mm-hmm. Remember, by the way, you saw the video that I sent you. Oh I wish my I could show God! It here, but due to copyright infringement. we would not be able to show it but you can, guys can log on to instagram and go to nate diaz's instagram 
Right. And it is a medley of his performances trying to show the UFC. He's been begging for the last three weeks. Right. He's, I think he's left two or three Twitter messages saying, let me go. Right. I mean, what do you make of it, man? Uh, well, you know, I mean, see, the Diaz brothers could be a little, you know, they're quite theatrical in their approach. So, you know, you don't know at what mm, that's true. time of the day or night they have tweeted. <laughs> you know, it comes down to the Conor McGregor approach, you know, where he tweets something at night and in the morning is deleted because of certain stuff that goes on in their head. You know, mm. so I don't know really what's happening. In fact, Nate Diaz said he's very game on boxing the Paul brothers. And Dana White has said, gladly, let's make that fight. So that is very, very interesting. Do you know something that um, Leon Edwards, who's now going to be facing Kumaru Usman for the welterweight title. But that's title, unfair. That's unfair because he lost versus Diaz, right? No, yeah, correct. <laughs> he technically lost. <laughs> if it is pride rules, Leon Edwards lost to Nate Diaz. Easily. Now, I know Leon Edwards, if he, if he watches this show, he's going to say, F you to you guys. <laughs> because you don't know anything. I'm like, but no, what I saw, I saw. <laughs> Come on, oh you also God. saw that fight. Did Absolutely. you remember anything else? Absolutely. No, <laughs> no. but on a serious note, you know, uh, Leon Edwards <laughs> beat Nate Diaz and he's now facing Kumaru Usman for the welterweight title. Dude, dude, dude. So he, in, in Leon Edwards, you know, on an interview or somewhere on Twitter said that if he becomes champ, he's going to offer Jorge Masvidal the belt, the first crack. Oh, wow. I mean… Yeah, but that's not happening where? any which ways. You know, I mean, uh, he's he, uh, he's anyways not going to be getting past Usman. So that's 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 a far fetch. No, no, but the thing is, yeah, correct. Huh? I mean, but you know, you never know because Usman has only fought strikers so far. Right. He has not fought. He's. A, I mean, Colby never wrestled with him ever. He right. Never used his wrestling with him. And sorry, sorry, he's faced. He's either faced a pure striker or a pure wrestler. He's not faced somebody who's got both. And Rocky right. has both. Right. Leon Very Edwards, true. people criticize him as much as you want, but that guy is technical as hell. Absolutely. He'll get into your face, has some serious power, and has great cardio in the tank. Absolutely, yes. In fact, you know, it's And we have seen Usman hurt. If Colby's punches have landed and hurt Usman, yeah. without the threat of the takedown, and I think Leon Edwards is a much cleaner striker than. Colby Covington. Well, Much yes, especially striker. after his Nate Diaz fight, definitely he would have upped his game. But on the flip side, Chips, I'm seeing a lot of fighters tweeting what they want to do next and Dana White, the boss, is just agreeing to it. Like Alexander Volkanovsky saying he wants to, I mean, when he gets past or if he gets past Max Holloway, he's looking to hit straight at Charles Oliveira. Yeah, you know, that's the thing, man. It's everybody who calls out Charles Oliveira is not, it doesn't end up well. Anybody yeah, who comes out and yeah. says, oh, I've got the recipe to de defeat Charles Oliveira, never ends up well. Well, you Charles, never know. you can you know, beat you and beat know. and beat and he will catch you. You never Dude, know. You never is, know. It's those limbs, man. It's those limbs. He catches guillotines and, and anything out of anywhere. You saw what happened to Gechi. Gechi fell down for 10 seconds and Charles had transitioned three times. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> In true. In 10 seconds, he went from a das to a gogo platter to an armbar to a rear naked choke. I don't know what was happening. <laughs> and all this was in the first round. <laughs> I think I think I think the referees that everybody had just even the commentators had stopped screaming. They, they, <laughs> they had stopped making sense. They were like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> True. True. You know, but the point I was trying to make is that is it more of the fighters trying to pick and choose as to what they want to do? Because right now, you know, like Nate Diaz is saying that, listen, just give me the fight and let me go or let me box Jake Paul. You know, Alexander Volkanovsky is saying, listen, let me just fight Charles Oliveira. There's nobody left in the 145 division. Right, right. You know, so I, see, the fighters are just blame. making their calls. And honestly, Twitter is a platform where possibly the fights are being made. Yeah, I mean, see, look, I, I don't know. I mean, it's you, you speak to the UFC more often than anybody else. You know, I don't, I, I think it's it's just, you know, it's it's meant for only like special fighters. It's not like, a, you know, tomorrow anybody can just walk up and say, hey, I want the fight. I mean, you know, you have to be Sugar Sean O'Malley status, you know, oh. minimum. <laughs> Flying in private jets and and you got to have that, you got to have yeah. that swag about you to be able to call out. Yeah, fighters. his last tweet was that he's six feet, six inches tall. <laughs> so he's bigger than John Jones, but he's in the banterweight division. He's talking some, saying some shit to Daniel Cormier. And Daniel Cormier is, listen, is like, listen, I have nine belts at home. I don't care whether you live or die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's like, I like you. You're a spark. You're a good fighter. I like you. You're a good fighter. But it doesn't matter to me what you do. 
<laughs> I have eight belts at home. I have proven myself. And damn right, <laughs> Daniel Cormier is a two division champion. Absolutely. He can yeah. do whatever the hell he wants. Absolutely. And, uh, and the thing is that the, all this Twitter nonsense are going on. By the way, oh, another hot news today. We are one step closer to uh, because Jake Paul has agreed to sign $300 million on the dotted line to Mike Tyson. So we might see Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. But uh, see, here's the thing with boxing. Do we see what actually happens or do we want to see what should happen? Well, we see what they want to show us. Exactly. So is it what actually is happening or is it what is going to happen? Like uh, if tomorrow, you know, the thing is that if it's celebrity matches at that state, at that level, Mm -hmm. anybody who knows anybody knows that you're not outboxing Mike Tyson. Not now, not even when he's 90. You know, I saw him hitting pads. It is just frightening. You know, whilst I agree with you, I, I believe boxing is at a stage where there is an entertainment aspect to it and there's a belt aspect to it. So, you know, we can talk about, uh, you know, Anthony Joshua and Usk coming in next. Or we yeah, could talk about the Paul brothers fine. and, you know, Floyd Mayweather going to Japan and kind of having these... You know, celebrity matches and all of that. So, do you? Th- I mean, no. See, I just think matches boxing are fine. Is, you know, boxing is kind of getting divided. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow Jake Paul calls out Mel Gibson or you know somebody of that sort, and they start <laughs> boxing. You know, you know, maybe Tom Hanks <laughs> or something of that sort. Tom Hanks, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I Shawshank you, Redemption uh, type of. Sure, sure. <laughs> no, no, come on, no. No, the thing is that I understand, absolutely understand. I see, I see celebrity, you know, we see influencer fights going up, yeah. happening more and more. We see YouTube fighters wanting to come and fight each other more and more. Yeah. So, uh, I don't, I don't mind the, that aspect at all. You know, it's so interesting. It you know, it's so interesting because so many people have written to me on Instagram and Twitter and I'm, actually, I want to put this out to everybody out there. If you think there needs to be one celebrity match that needs to be made, in India or abroad, please hashtag Fight Mania. <laughs> tag us on Instagram. Yes. Uh, you know, Fight Mania. Tag us IVM Podcast and let us know who do you want. Because as far as I remember, it was Pratik Babar who called out Varun Dhawan last. Dude, yeah, Varun Dhawan versus Pratik Babar to had to was was in the was on the cards. Absolutely. And, uh, he in he actually said that we were already on. Somesh and I were were going to be the commentators and promoters. Yeah. And uh, we were ready to. You know, create a digital vein, literally a virtual vein that absolutely, could have happened here. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so uh, all the, the trash all, talk could start. All the listeners can actually hashtag who do they want when it comes to celebrities in India or abroad, and we will definitely try and reach out to them and make them tweet. <laughs> so it could be, you know, Shah Rukh versus Salman. It could be, you know, uh, anybody. No, no, no. Anybody. Uh, Bhai, out Bhai is our undefeated record, huh? <laughs> Bhai is our undefeated record. Dude, he destroyed Woodley's career. That's Woodley was true. not the same fighter after. That's People true. People are going to think 10 times. I mean, like, Olega, like a celebrity so also think, yaar, wo UFC welterweight champion. Tha. Absolutely. And he killed so many that he had And boxing bhi chuka, aur wo chala gaya hai. Correct. Correct. So, so people will think twice. Sultan 2, Sultan 3, whoever wants to be in the movies, by Shodo. Nee, nee. I was happy being part of Tufan where I didn't get beat. <laughs> and even then, with Farhan, chalo, luckily I had some success. So it's good. <laughs> yes, but still we would want to hear from you. So please tag us, please hashtag us. Let us know which celebrities you want to face each Absolutely. other. And we would reach out to them and ask them if they're game for a shout out. But guys, Absolutely. speaking of that, guys, let us... Wait. Just before so much, before we move on to the next segment, yeah, uh, we want to just do a quick shout out to another fighter, another great fighter, a former WEC fighter and now UFC fighter who's retiring is a Mr. Eddie Wineland. Oh, Eddie Wineland, thank you so much for incredible. your glorious career. We can get a picture of Eddie Wineland, guys. Uh, that would be uh, incredible for everyone to see on the show. Yeah, Eddie, there we go. What oh, a beast. Man, that was, what a beast. He was a vintage, vintage badass and recently he lost on the UFC on ESPN card, I think. Yes, and yes. I think it's the manner in which he lost. He lost by stoppage and I think he had just had enough, you know. You know, it happens there. Yeah. It happens. You know, it happened to Joanna because when she had that brutal spinning back fist come and she went face first into the canvas. Would she plant it? You know, man. you yeah. wake up, you don't know what's happened. There are some parts of your face which hurt and you're like, listen, I'm done. You know, because there's just so much yeah. happening outside the octagon and there's so much in my business career that, you know, maybe this is just that time where you put a full stop to that glorious career of yours and you move on. And that's the life of think, a sports yeah. person. 
But speaking exactly. of life of a sports person, I would like to ask for a short, short break from all the listeners out here. We'll be right back after this commercial break with your host and host Somesh the Superhuman Camera and Mystic Chips. We'll see you on the other side with what's happening with Gegard Musasi and Josh Emnet versus Calvin Catter. See you on the other side. We know you love fast food. Fast fashion. Faster payment. Lightning fast internet speed. Then why not fast information? On Think Fast where we discuss the latest developments in the world of technology, business, marketing, pop culture. With a side of sarcasm and my dad jokes. Or just mine. Not mine, Varun. My jokes are funny. So join me, guys, the funnier one, Suchita Salwan, co-founder of LBB. And me, Varun Dugirala, the co-founder of The Glitch, as we think fast only on the IBM network. Fresh episodes out every Wednesday. On the IBM app, website, or wherever you get your podcast from. Welcome God, back, my ladies. My arm is looking... So, sorry, sorry, bro. <laughs> oh, my, my arm in that ad was looking very uh, Daniel Cormier. Can you stop being so, like, self-obsessed? So, <laughs> the photo's nice, yeah. <laughs> see, sorry, sorry, see sorry, our, our photographers here at IVM Podcast are excellent <laughs> at Photoshop. So, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was going to say it looks more uh, Dilip Chhabria than Daniel Cormier, but chalo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fight Mania by your host and those Somesh, the superhuman camera, and Arjun, aka Mystic Chips, are back after this really short commercial break we're going to be just taking very, very about 7 minutes of yours because we want to make it a crisp 35 minutes show thank you so much for tuning in and staying with us but we want to talk okay, about before Somesh uh, sorry sorry go, please go ahead I, I think today we are coordination thoda off hai, do ho, you know, Abhi, you know people with Dubai return you know, and you know because they earn too much money and all you know, I mean they don't care yeah, you know we <laughs> 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 I mean, come on. Emirates, Emirates economy class to supply name. Ironically, they dropped the ticket prices. Oh, India really? is more expensive. Yeah, yeah. Because they were not flying in the sector for the longest time. No? So ah. now they've dropped the rates. So everybody buys it. And then uh, oh, wow. Air India is more expensive, man. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Wow, Achha, before crazy. so much, before you before you announce the next card and and do the fights next card, we want to talk quickly about uh, Gegard Musasi's 50th professional. Oh man, Look. you know, I was in fact coming to that. Gegard Musasi is a beast who's actually been fighting since, if I'm not mistaken, 2004 or 2005. Yeah, he he started his career with M1 Global. And oh my yeah. God, he's been on a tear. Man, this guy doesn't seem to slow down here. Yeah? Dude, he looks the same also. Huh? He looks no the age. same. No age, no damage, nothing. Wow, nothing you know, calm. he's... Crazy, and he's just racking in the wins. And you know, he's in fact one of those few fighters who opted out of the UFC contract, who didn't renew it, and went to Bellator. I think he went for the money. Firstly, absolutely, I, I think he was absolutely. not getting the money that he wanted, and he Bellator was more than happy to pay him. So good, good for him. He's you know, but he's winning. Money. That's the best part. He's winning, and he's winning. And the kind of talent that's coming out in that middleweight division at Bellator is a, is a house on fire. Dude. Is there's insane. There. There's Romero there. There are a lot of good guys there. Uh, Romero, Romero think, left the UFC. Romero, yeah, has, Romero's there, man. Romero, I think, has moved to 205. Like, he's in light heavyweight. Yeah, now. but yeah, but the thing is, that's the funny thing. Musasi jumps. Oh, yeah, dude. Musa, I mean, Musasi I, jumps. Dude, he's the last of the old school badasses who doesn't give a shit. Well, there's, there. one, like, Chal, there's, there's one another guy of old school who's still there in the UFC. And that is Sean Strickland. Dude, Sean Strickland versus Alex Pereira is coming up. And I don't like Strickland's chances. Oh, no, no, no. He's he's taking it. But before we move on to that, Gegard Musasi mm. has, is looking to get his 50th professional win, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's going to be his 50th professional win when he fights. Just for one, he's going to defend his light heavyweight, his uh, middleweight belt. Yeah. And uh, he's been talking about, you know what, he, in that interview he said, he doesn't even like fighting. He said he doesn't like fighting. And he's got 50 professional wins? He's got 50 professional wins. Like, I don't like fighting. I just do it like that. Because I'm good at it. Oh I mean, it's like God. feather. You know? I mean, you know, I, probably... I, <laughs> I have no idea what goes on in these guys' brains. Because I don't know. He's like, I don't like fighting. But I like just, you know, whatever. You know, in fact, Rory McDonald had, had also said that. Do you know Rory McDonald has given up everything and he works in the church? Like, he's a full-time... Uh, What's hang on, hang on. Rory, the Canadian psycho. Yes, he works in a church. He works in the fighting. church. He said he doesn't like fighting. He works in a church. So now he's with Bellator and he still works in a church. 
Wow. And technically he Man. says I want to give up worldly pleasures. You know that's it's becoming more and more because even guys like Yuri Prohaska has given up worldly pleasures. Where is his car? Where is his, he lives in the jungle? Yeah, he lives the in only, the jungle. The only pleasure he has is that samurai sword. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's a complete samurai. You know, I mean, I have no idea what these guys are up to, man. They are, you know, it's even it's, it's so freaky. Musashi. I would not even want to interview them. I I would not even want to interview them. I would be that scared. I don't know what to ask them. Like, yeah. oh, what do you do for freedom? What do you do in the? It's it's like okay, when I met like uh, the, you remember this fighter called Alexander Shlemenko. Yes. Uh, who fought many many years ago? Uh, you know, under multiple bra- banners in Europe, he was in that Jeff Monson crowd. You know, <laughs> yeah. Jeff All Monson those guys. is still but fighting. <laughs> so. Jeff Monson will never will never stop fighting. Bob Sapp and Jeff Monson will never <laughs> stop fighting. And we never want them to him. They, no, Jeff Monson, Bob Sapp, and Butterbean should <laughs> never stop fighting. <laughs> never ever stop fighting. <laughs> oh uh, my god so, so guys like Alexander Shlemenko I remember I was talking to him in the bus on the way home yeah. from the fight and I'm like so what do you do in uh, in your holidays I train what do you do uh, at night I train what, what do you do in your free time I train I, not even smiling I said what do you so I said you train and sleep yes duh. and I'm like what who am I talking to <laughs> I'm like, this is the worst interview ever. Oh my god. But speaking of who you want to talk to, slash, who do you want to see fight? Oh my <gasps> god. Cowboy Saroni and Joe Lezon cancelled again. Yeah, I'm this is becoming like Tony and Khabib. Now. Yeah, it is just becoming like Tony and Khabib. And I'm like, dude, when when are we gonna see these guys? It was really one of those old school good fights that we wanted to see. And Dana White sadly said, it's never going to happen again. They're never booking those guys. Joe Lozon is never going to face Cowboy Saroni. Sadly. Yeah, I mean, after it happened, you know, first time Cowboy mysteriously pulled out. Then uh, yeah. this time Joe Lozon tore his knee. Yeah. His knee got dislocated and he pulled out. Right. So, I don't know. I think it's, this fight is cursed. It's you know, cursed. Sometimes it's, it's really funny. You know, sub, you know, sometimes when a fight happens, uh-huh. something horrible happens like a leg break, a tear, a... Uh, you know, can something bad could have happened to Joe Lozon's legs? Yeah, because you know how cowboy kicks. Oh man, seriously, seriously. I mean, and you uh, never know what could go down. You never know what something. Could go down. But okay, if it's not meant to happen, it's not meant to it's happen. That's the sad part. Yeah, like Tony versus Khabib. I still believe prime Tony Ferguson would have been the greatest threat to Khabib Nurmagomedov. Absolutely. In fact, right now Dana White is saying that Tony was there in for Khabib, and Khabib ducked Tony for a very long time. Oh, how come Dana White has started speaking uh, a little more freely? Well, I personally believe uh, Mm. that is happening because Khabib has pretty much got uh, some kind of arrangement with Bellator and they are in that exchange of fighters kind of uh, scenario. So, Eagle FC and Bellator are doing a cross promotion. Yes, so almost like a cross promotion because um, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of Bellator fighters are getting one fight contracts in Eagle FC and Scott Coker has said, yes, he's game on it. He wants to exchange fighters and have have a deal with Eagle FC so that his fighters can get uh, good money, good exposure in a different country, etc, etc. Dude, blah, blah, blah. he has the same deal. He has the same deal with BKFC because Michael Venom Page is yeah. fighting at BKFC Versus against uh, the one and only Mike Perry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But so that, a lot of speculation can be made uh, and we're going to keep this for another day. So we need to wrap up the show. So, but so much quickly take us through an important part in the next week's fight card. Wow. You know what? In fact, UFC have got 10 weeks back-to-back fights and the next fight card, which is a UFC fight night, Vegas 57, happening at UFC Apex, is another good one where the co-main event is Neil Magny versus wow. Rakhmonov. Who is a, yeah, a who is a new age guy from the Khabib camp, I think, in Dagestan. But the main event of the evening is Arman Sarukian versus Matthias Gamrot. My God, you know, this is the first time I'm seeing a main event. I think a non, you know, Uber big named main event. Yes. So Stay tuned, guys, because these guys, sometimes these sleepers are the ones that become stars overnight. Well, absolutely, because we've got Umar Numagomedov, who's on the card, which is a good fight. Oh, that's Khabib's cousin brother. Khabib's yeah. cousin Khabib's brother. Cousin. And Thiago Moises is on the card. So it's not going oh, to be yeah, that much it. of a sleeper. It's going to be an exciting event. You can watch all the action on Sony 10. One, two, three, and I believe on Sony 10. Four. 
Yeah, sorry, ten four. I think in Telugu and Tamil, and uh, apart from that, of course, we will be coming up and and you know on our social media we'll be talking about it. So make your picks and tell us who you like. You can follow me on social media on Instagram. I'm at Arjun Chips, and on Twitter I'm at the Mystic Chip. You can write me on Instagram Somesh dot Kamra and on Twitter I'm Somesh underscore Kamra. Make your picks, tag us, hashtag us, and get a chance to win some exciting Fight Mania merchandise. You can also yes. go on IVM Podcast dot com and check out the merchandise that they have launched. But you have to pay for it. Yes, you have Aziz to pay for free. it. That's paid. But for. here, as I say, all you have to do is hashtag is hashtag Fight Mania in all your messages, your comments, and your picks, and you win a chance to win some merchandise. So, guys, don't forget that. Tune in every Thursday, seven thirty PM, with me, Mystic Chips, Arjun Chibalkati, and so much the Superhuman Camera, who's launched his own line of uh, of, of uh, bottles and apparel, and they're available on Amazon and Flipkart. So check it out, guys. I just bought my own. Abhi tak aa raha hai, thoda time lagega. But when I get it, I'm going to be drinking out of it. So yeah. see you guys soon next Thursday, seven thirty PM. Don't miss out. You've been watching Fight Me. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com/survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us, and you know what? We're gonna do a few prizes. So I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of like maybe ten people, and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com/survey where you can fill out the survey. Inflation, fiscal deficit, GDP, MSP, NPA, equity market, वगैरह वगैरह. दोस्तों हमने सारे शब्द टीवी या अखबार में जरूर देखे होंगे या फिर सुने होंगे पर हम में से कितने लोग हैं जो ये जानते हैं कि इन सब का सीधा प्रभाव पड़ता है हमारी सैलरी पर हमारे इंक्रीमेंट पर और कम वक्त हमारे खर्चों पर दोस्तों मेरा नाम है अभिनव त्रिवेदी और मैं बात कर रहा हूँ इक्का दुक्का इकोनॉमी पॉडकास्ट ऐसी जहाँ पे इस तरह के इकोनॉमिक और फाइनेंशियल टर्म्स को मैं जोड़ूंगा सीधा आपकी जेब ऐसी हर मंगलवार एक नया एपिसोड सुने आई पॉडकास्ट की वेबसाइट ऐप या फिर किसी भी अन्य पॉडकास्ट प्लेटफॉर्म पर।